my dear friends, I'm super excited to be here with you today and to talk about you. I, I like to talk about you. I hope you like to talk about yourself as well. I want to really invite you as well. Um, but before I do that, I want to give you a quick intro. I'm Matteo. I'm the founder of Matteo Co. And I'm also the founder of FitFund.Life. And the focus of what I'm doing here, and probably most of you don't know me, some of you might know me, is really focused on kind of three areas, growth, grip, and grit. Growth really being about taking your life to the next level, about progress. Grip is really about how you manage your life. Am I having grip? Can I really manage what I'm doing in my life? And, um, you know, am I, can I cope with my emotions? And that's going to be today's topic about emotional intelligence and about grit. Grit is really about resilience. I love these topics to the bone and to the core. And today is really about emotional intelligence. And I want to give you kind of, you know, my takeaway on emotional intelligence. And I know everybody has a little different way of doing this, but I really believe that this is an actually also a request on one of these videos that I have recorded. And one, I think if I read it right, Giga Pedia 6531 actually requested some more about emotional intelligence. So I want to talk about first, um, you know, what it means to me. Emotional intelligence, in my opinion, and humble opinion, is the way we manage our emotions. It's the way we manage how we interact with others and how we interact with the world in a nutshell. We have these a couple things. And first of all is self-awareness. It's self-awareness about where you are in a the journey. Then you have, obviously, the second piece, which is empathy. And I think this is what a lot of people talk about mostly when it comes down to emotional intelligence, because you think about, okay, am I empathetic enough, you know, when somebody dies or when, you know, somebody has a breakup and, you know, there are different situations where we need to be empathetic, but, you know, displaying empathy is a big feat and it requires courage. It requires really us digging deep, deeper and really being in touch with ourselves. Every culture has a different way they think about empathy. And then you have obviously, you know, d different situations you can exercise empathy. You know, I, I gave the example the other day when, you know, I was in a supermarket and where a lot of us actually happened to be in a supermarket and in a queue. And the lady in front of me had a baby or had a little, you know, maybe boy and she couldn't pay. She tried to pay, but the car was declined. So she was looking she's like, oh, okay, we have to return something. And, you know, by the looking at her, I, I thought she probably doesn't have enough money. So I said, you know what, I get it. And she looked, no, I can't accept that. And I said, don't worry. And then I paid and, you know, and, you know, her, she said, I don't think I've ever experienced something like that. And tears came in her eyes and, you know, I didn't do anything big out of it and i just you know gave her out she gave me a hug and i said yeah okay go go on and then i just paid my groceries and went on and didn't think about it anymore but you know one thing that we really as human beings have in common is kindness and showing it in you, your unique way is super important it shows character as well because we live in this turbulent times where people actually want to get ahead and step over everybody else, just me, 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 and my goals that they forget actually to really prioritize other human beings. And sometimes it's not even prioritizing other human beings. It's just being observant. You know, if you drive in a car, my stepdad always gives this example, you've got to think what other people do. And you've got to predict what other people do. Let's correct that. This is exactly how he says it. And I have learned my way and probably other people as well from my driving i'm generally quite a good driver but i had you know a couple episodes when probably like yourself when you're in a situation and you know that's kind of funky how the person drives and then of course they come you know cut you or you know break suddenly and all these different things so this is where you know predicting what other people do uh, can also teach you and give you you know also this understanding uh of you know what can happen but also empathy because a lot of us especially when we drive we think you know people do it on purpose and then do it to us when they cut us 
over or when they, you know, hunk at us, sometimes it's just because they are stressed. And, you know, a lot of these situations show that we can display empathy, that we can actually display understanding and be kind. Third, that I want to give you what I think is really important for emotional intelligence is motivation. You know, emo being, I know this might sound very strength, uh, strange, but in my life, emotional intelligence really comes to understanding that, you know, you are in control of your own life. Nobody else is. Of course, you have your parents who told you, you have the school system, you have the society, all of these rules and things that you inhale and that you make them yours and internalize them. But in the end, it's your own decision what you do with your life, where you want to be in five, 10 years. Nobody will dictate and tell you, hey, you know, you have to be this, you have to study that, you have to get that type of job. No, maybe your parents. But if you are really selfish, you say, well, I don't really care what everybody or anybody tells me and I will do whatever I want. And, you know, you're right to do so. Just make sure that the motivation is really focused on things that you care about deeply in your life. And that often really comes back to, you know, can I make other humans better, but especially can I make myself better? Can I think more effectively? Can I, you know, achieve my goals? And that's the motive where we will need heaps of motivation. Self-regulation will be next, but this is where you really will have to motivate yourself and inspire yourself to keep going, never give up. And this is where, you know, this is kind of like a tank you will need to keep filling up every day. So motivation. I already spoiled the beans, but the fourth one is self-regulation. And this is the big one about emotional intelligence. You know, think about your teenage son or daughter, you know, they uh, don't want to clean the room You and, you know, and you told them like a thousand times, please bring the dirty cloth into the washroom or into the bathroom. And they never do. And you want to, and then, you know, it reached its limit. It lies that a pile of clothes is all over the place and you just want to stomp in a room and scream at them. And this is the moment when you actually self-regulate and you say, hey, Mark, hey, Paula, hey, let's just pause here. <laughs> and, you know, I am in this situation daily where I just even get annoyed by myself that I am not in the mood or that, you know, the task doesn't go as fast as usually I can get it done. And I need to think, I need to dis dissociate from my own feelings and know that a lot of the feelings that are coming at me can really come to just not be my own. It's perhaps I'm underslept because it's the reaction of the body. Perhaps it's the external environment. Perhaps it's the news. Perhaps I'm sad because I have to be sad because my spouse is, you know, from a country where is war whatever that is, or perhaps a loved one died, it can be a different thing, right? And this is where self-regulation is so key nowadays, especially when we come to understand about the corporate life, when we understand about the entrepreneurial life, and when we come to understand about finances, and when we know that the way we show up leaves a clue about us. And more often we do it, more people start to associate certain keywords to us, kind, empathetic, giver, a taker, mean person, or a loving person, adventurous, bold, generous, you know, responsible, responsive, attractive, or, you know, being mean, and all these different things that we might do along the way brings some certain level of story and emotional intelligence it's in the center of all of this so when you learn to regulate yourself and when you start thinking about principles and this is what i will talk in the next thing um, with social skills but before that i want to also tell you that you know when it comes down to self-regulation it's a lot about emotional ag agility and we recommend your book from susan D susan david and she wrote, I think, multiple books. But one book I was reading also a lot is about, you know, the science kind of based approach, which allows you to navigate kind of the life's twists and turns, stresses and setbacks with self-acceptance. And I mean, that's a big thing also that what, which Barbara Bra, Tra, Barbara, Tra, I think I've butchered now the name Tara Bra. Um, she, um, 
about emotional, about radical acceptance, apologies. And that's amazing if we understand, you know, the clear sightedness and open mind. And it's really the, you know, in our control to manage our own emotions and gain control over it. So Susan David, Emotional Agility is an amazing book. Definitely recommend that. And the final thing, the fifth one I want to give you guys today is the social skills. You know, emotional intelligence, and that's, I already kind of spoiled the beans. If you want to make friends, if you want to influence people, you will need to learn social skills. You will need to ask questions. You will need to smile. You will need to understand why you said. You will need to understand how to present. You will need to understand to ask for raise. You will need to adjust to a new culture as an expat. You will need to practice social skills in different situations. When you move to a flat, new flat, you need a help. Uh, you, you know, your <laughs> back is killing you. I need somebody to lift the thing. You will need social skills. If you are, if people associate to you, and that's the, that's the funny thing, right? You know, you see me on a video, you're like, I don't like that guy. Or perhaps you, you think like, I like him. He's really likable because he's himself. He doesn't pretend, you know, he's using awkward words. Whatever that is, people associate immediately the way you look, the way you speak, if you smile, if you're positive, if you're negative, if you want something from them or not, they, they sense that feeling. This is the ancient sense of predator we have built in ours. When, you know, a salesman rings the bell and we already can smell it, that they want to sell us something and, you know, people don't like to be sold. They like to be influenced. So social skills are key in what you're going to do in your life. That's why I would really encourage you to think about it that way. Think about it that how are you improving your social skills? And this is the thing I actually told you before. It's principles. It's principles. And one thing I can recommend you is a little ebook I have written a while back. And I actually have a digital version of it. And uh, hopefully I will get it again back to a normal shape to send it to be able to send it to people as well. So I would recommend you to read that. You can find it on the website as well. And it's called Mastering Body, Mind and Life. And it's really about 12 principles. And I have edited it a little bit since the time I have written, I think three years ago or four years ago. But it's a lot about managing yourself. It's a lot about your energy. It's a lot about fitness. It's a lot about health. It's a lot about goals, influencing others, mastermind, you know, gratitude and all these different little things and principles that actually help you to become better influential person, but also master your social skills. So overall, your emotional intelligence really depends on self-awareness. Where are you at? And I know you, I skimmed self-awareness really quickly on purpose, actually, because I wanted to go back to it. You know, self-awareness, in my opinion, is a lot about, you know, Understanding all of these things, understanding empathy, understanding motivation, understanding how am I regulating in these different situations from partner, relationship, job. And remember, you're different in different settings, right? Sometimes you might be more serious here, less serious here. You might be more upfront here, less upfront there. You might be more focused on, you know, helping others and less focused here. So you need to judge, you know, the self-awareness is like, if you have your watch, right, you know, I look every morning and I'm like, okay, or I even don't have to look because I get a notification. Once I wake up, I start move. The, uh, the watch actually says, hey, you slept six hours, you slept seven hours, you slept eight hours, or you slept four. And I know I'm aware. First, I check it, right? I think, okay, how am I feeling? Yeah, I've slept four hours. <laughs> And the same with empathy, right? You know, am I empathetic? What was the last time I did something kind for somebody? Did I let them in front um, in the supermarket? Or did I pay for somebody? Or did I invite somebody for drinks? Or did I, you know, um, send somebody a book without them expecting it? That's what you need. Motivation to get, you know, going where you are going. You will need heaps of motivation. You get that. Regulation. We talk about it. Self-regulation. And then social skills. I hope it gave you a little bit insight in how I'm thinking about emotional intelligence. It's obviously a bright topic and it's not, that's it. And there is nothing more. There is definitely more. 
But if you are interested in this topic really in detail, in different topics, not just this, but live your purpose, think about friendships, think about, you know, where you're at, think about wellness, think about, you know, self-leadership, team leadership, organization leadership, then I encourage you and invite you for a 60-minute-ish, maybe less, maybe more, webinar with me, myself, and Timmy Oroth, my good friend. And Timmy Oroth is an ex-CEO of a hotel group, and she's currently an entrepreneur. And we have done in the past kind of few things on LinkedIn leadership series and we now thinking to a little bit make it a bit bigger because we got a really positive feedback so if you're interested in these topics and you want also to get somebody who's really emotionally intelligent like Timmy we are very similar sometimes I have a feeling and we have very cool chemistry always together so if you're interested in that please uh, sign up I would be very honored having you there and that's probably it I hope it served you. It gave you little ideas again. Shots of inspiration. Let's go. You know, shots of inspiration is all about applying what you're doing. So this is a little special episode. And again, you know, shout out to you. I really probably mispronounced your name. Sorry. Gigapedia6531. Thanks for, you know, asking as well on the video, the difference between growth and fixed mindset. And I really appreciate it. And I hope it gives you a little inspiration so i will post the link to the comments and i hope it will serve you so guys also just like giga6531 i hope i again didn't butcher it please share this with your loved one share it with your friends and again i hope i see you at a webinar you're probably gonna see a link below um register there and the rest is your future until the next time stay legendary <laughs>